Well, I have to start this video by saying I screwed up. What you're going to see in a second is what I shot yesterday. I wrapped the uh, heating element with this carbon uh, fiber wrap and then I wrapped it with aluminum. The mistake I made was I did not protect the wires with capped on tape and I ended up shorting out um, the thermistor, the, uh, the heater core. Um, this, where the, you see the little uh, red braided wire that goes in, I ended up wrapping it and I didn't protect it and I shorted out the two wires that go into that metal tube. It wouldn't be a big deal um, except this solid uh, heater element at the bottom does not have, it's, it's not split. You'll see some of them where there'll be a split that's held together with a screw. You can loosen the screw, take it out. So I, I could have replaced this for, I don't know, five bucks or something, but I can't get that out. I could buy this part and something else, something else, but what I did is I just bought a an in-between, somewhere between the E3D um, hot end and the five or ten dollar Chinese version clone. Well, it's been three days since I made the first part of this video and quite a few things have happened. I always learn by screwing up. Um, I screwed up all along this process and I screwed up when I shorted this out and I screwed up by ordering a new one but because of that I learned a ton of stuff I wouldn't have had it gone perfectly. If I never broke it I wouldn't have learned anything so by messing this up and messing that up I learned from that and I've learned a ton more stuff that now all these things are starting to make sense and it's a lot simpler than you might think. There's a thing that measures the temperature and a thing that adjusts the temperature. That's it. There's a hot end and a cold end and you want that filament to stay cold up top, get hot and then immediately cool from the fan. So uh, once you get into it and learn about it, it's not overly complicated like uh, it is at first when you first see it. Luckily, when you first start reading about these printers, they're like, you should print out this bracket in case the hot end goes bad. So I did print that out. So I have this and you have to somehow mount this bracket on the printer where your heat sink used to be. There's not a lot of information about how to get this heat sink off. Yeah, you can take off the Allen bolt on the front, pull that off and unscrew that and take the, the, the white tube off. And then you can take this solid, uh, uh, the, the, the solid metal uh, heater core at the bottom off. You just loosen another element, uh, Allen wrench, and this slides off. But you're left with um, this heat sink on there. And you can look down and you can see it's there's a couple nuts in there. And the way to get it is you have to take both these cover plates off. So the first thing you do, you take this cover plate off. There's three screws on the front, three screws on the bottom, and it's the same for the back and the front. So there's three on the top, three on the bottom for the back and the front. You take both of these off and you can get to everything. Um, and that's how I removed these wires too. Before, you know, if you're going to be replacing it, you're going to have to take these wires off. So you got to go through and snap all the zip ties and open up the bottom. There's nine screws or whatever. And you got to go in and snap the zip ties, cut them with a, a flush cutter, hopefully not damaging any other wires. You unplug the thermistor wires, which are the, the thick yellow braided wires. Um, then you unplug uh, the uh, heater probe wires or whatever they are, the temperature probe wires. They're, and they're in the back corner of the circuit board. Um, and you can go through and then you pull all those out. And so these are, so this is completely removed. First, I forgot to mention, you gotta undo these, uh, the spirally cable protectors to get this heat sink off. Um, I read one comment in one page where this guy said, hey, in case you're wondering how to get it off, you have to loosen this uh, tensioner belt, take the little tensioner spring off, this tiny little spring where you pop it off with a little needle nose pliers. <clears throat> I also took it off, there's a, a geared pulley on the, the Z-axis motor. I took it off that too, so it really has tons of slack. And there's two little Allen wrenches, uh, nuts, that you can loosen. And so you get in, it's behind that uh, rubber belt. You, if, you, if you pull it down, you can kind of see it, but when it's loose, you pull that belt completely loose, you get in, you remove those screws completely, and this thing comes right off, and those, those nuts are kind of fixed in there. I'm, I'm sure I could get them off, but they're pretty tight on there. Um, so it's not like the front where the, they slide up and down. These are pretty fixed on there. And the, uh, the bolts that they use are, it's an Allen, head on one end and they're pretty narrow 
they're fine thread and short. And to fit this new um, mount, they need to be a longer uh, bolt. You can't use the same bolt on there. It didn't fit, it was too short. So luckily I have all my uh, bolts and nuts and washers and everything sorted. So I went through and I found um, a bolt that I could possibly use. I found two bolts that I could possibly use to remount this on the same holes. Cause you're gonna use the same holes that are here. You just need a longer bolt to go completely through, completely through this mount and attach it with a nut. Um, the problem is it's pretty tough finding these bolts. They're, they're very narrow and to get one that's, you know, these are about maybe three quarters of an inch to get an inch or something. It was kind of tough. Um, it's possible that I might have to widen these holes on the plastic on here. Um, right now it's, it's a tight, tight fit. So I might be kind of threading it, which isn't the end of the world, but I don't want to break this. I don't necessarily want to drill in here and ruin this. This is kind of permanent. You know, this one, once I get the new hot end on here, I plan on printing a new version of this just in case or a better one out of, you know, PETG type of filament. This is PLA. So it's, you know, you want to have one just in case. Same, same holes through the back behind the belt. Run the wires to the circuit board. I might have to uh, cut and refit this, these uh, connectors and this connector here. I don't know if they come with the exact connectors for this circuit board. There's a lot of discussion about whether you should buy an E3D uh, um, hot end for 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars or whether you should buy the Chinese version for five or 10 bucks and there's varying opinions and some people say, you know what, yeah, you might get a bad one. If you buy a couple of the cheap ones, you might get a good one. You can interchange parts. It's not going to be, with the E3D, you're going to get it, put it in, and it'll work, is from what I've read. These other ones, you kind of have to do some tweaking and fiddling and maybe round some stuff over, maybe polish the inside, and maybe make sure things are lined up and refitted. I went with the cheap one because this is a cheap budget beginner printer. I'm not going to, if something breaks, I don't want to really buy the, the $90 um, version. One other note is if you buy those ones from China, they take a month. Um, I think today's like the 10th and I was going to buy one and it said it was going to get here the 10th of the next month. Well, yeah, it turns out I did have to uh, drill into these two holes to get the uh, bolt that I was using to work. Um, I slowly worked my way up using uh, some smaller drill bits. So finally I used this one and I kind of bored out these holes so they were big enough. And like I said, here's the, that's the bolt that it, it came with and here's the one I'm trying to use. So it now fits. I was a little weary. I didn't want to break this plastic, but hopefully these work. Well, here it is mounted on there. And I didn't really uh, drill out these holes. They were a little tight with those bolts, but I kind of tapped them. I slowly worked my worked it in, loosened it, so it's kind of tapped into the plastic and with a nut on it. Um, I heard some snapping noises, but that was just this piece snapping in tightly to here. You can see it fits very tightly in, in this space. Um, one issue that may come up is those uh, heads kind of stick out a little. They're not as uh, flush as the old ones were. So that does make this belt a little tighter and to fit it on here and with the uh, the tensioner it might be a little too tight so um, I'm not putting it on there for now because I do not know if these bolts will interfere with the uh, the new uh, uh, hot end so I might have to change it a little bit put the something on this side or change it somehow grind these down um, so I'm just leaving it for now until I can actually fit it but that's how it sits on there. Now, prepping this, there's a lot, there's, um, I've read a lot 
and watched a bunch of videos. And what I've learned is if, if I watch a hundred different videos on how to prep these extruder ends, I'll have a hundred different op opinions on how to prep them. Um, most people say don't just slap it on there. You gotta take it apart, you gotta bore the holes out, you gotta check, you gotta wrap it with Teflon tape, you gotta wrap it with Kapton tape, you gotta use thermal paste, you can use a little drill bit to ream everything out, you can put, new, put a new uh, PTFE tube to make sure it's flush, you can flare the ends out of the tube, you can uh, uh, use toothpaste to bore it out. So I, I saw a whole bunch of different things and I don't frankly know what's right and what's wrong. What I do know, or what I think I know is, you want no air gaps, no voids, no sharp ends. You want a solid connection from where the filament comes into this until it goes out the tip. You want that hot end to be hot. You want some sort of heat uh, protection to where this heat sink is cold. So you want hot and cold, and you don't want that to fluctuate. Um, so what I am gonna do, I am gonna wrap the hot end with Kapton tape. I am gonna put in the thermistor and I'm gonna wrap that with Kapton tape. I'm also gonna wrap it around the heater cartridge, um, hopefully not making the mistake I made before, which is shorting that out. I am gonna check the top. Some people said these don't fit tightly and there's a little gap, so I'm gonna measure to make sure it's nice and tight. Um, when I put the PTFE tube, I am gonna put it all the way down till it hits, and I might flare out the end so it has a nice tight seal, and there's a flare, and you're gonna fit it with a square opening. I might wedge it so it fits nice and tightly. I could spend a half an hour like some of those videos show prepping this and I'm not going to do that right now I just want to get it done and get it down there but um, there's a whole array of uh, suggestions and ideas to get it to print better and to to get this to work I I'm gonna check it I'm gonna see if it looks right I'm gonna put a different nozzle on there but I'm not gonna go crazy and do a million different things right now I'm just gonna try to put it on there and and see how it goes. Okay, I took everything apart and now I'm putting it back together again. I want to explain a few things. First, this piece is held in. You put it in flush and then you tighten this down and that's what holds the pressure and keeps it in. Um, obviously, you want that heater cartridge centered and you lock it in with that screw there. You put the thermistor, this comes pre-taped. So you put it in on the side with the holes. You put the heater cartridge in and then you, this screw holds the thermistor wires in so they don't come out. Also, I used my sander to round over that edge a little because it's going to fit in that hole and you can kind of see there's a little bit of a taper in there. So that'll fit tight. Now, like I said, it comes with a heater cartridge and thermistor, but it just has bare ends and um, mine plugs into these little white connectors. So I'm gonna try to pop these wires off and splice in these wires so I can just plug it in. Hopefully, I don't have to cut and solder every, anything. Um, that would be a real pain, and if I ever had to change it again, I'd have to recut it and resolder. I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna try to fit it right into the end connectors and make sure it's tight, and hopefully it'll just snap right in. I have this mounted. Um, I didn't have screws long enough to go through and put a nut, but I was just able to tap into the uh, PLA. It did kind of crack a little here, but hopefully it'll hold on long enough to get a few prints and I'll print a new one of these. Um, one thing I did is I, I wrapped this with Kapton tape and I mounted it so that the wires stick out to the right. And the way I did that, the reason I did that is I wanted there to be enough room because this triggers that uh, x-axis switch and if they stuck out to the left I didn't want to bend them up at a very steep angle, it was pulling on this this wire here um, for the um, heater heater block, and I, I didn't want to pull push that up at a steep angle because it's kind of tight, and I didn't want to rip it out. So I left it sticking out to the left. It's a little bit inconvenient having the print head in the back, but um, hopefully that should be okay. Um, I mounted my larger fan with the coupling onto the, uh, this existing one, and I'm gonna print a new version of this, one that also has airflow coming out of the bottom. Um, hopefully that'll be my first or second print. So uh, I have everything connected, wrapped. Um, I put this uh, PTFE tube in there, and I put this uh, 
old existing adapter here which is going to go into this and screw on. I cut it about the same length as the existing one. Um, now I'm going to run all these wires through here, zip tie them going along, and I think I may have to solder them because when I looked at, I took a, this cap, this was on the heater cartridge, and I have these connectors that look like this, and they're kind of crimped on there, and it's not something I can easily remove. So I might have to put, plug these back into here, cut it, and maybe solder it or temporarily uh, twist them together and use electrical tape. I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't want to continuously have to do that. That's all. You know, I have to connect that and then put the two uh, frames back on. And Well, I got it all back together. Um, I did have to solder those wires to get the connector in. That's kind of the shape of the wires on the top. I did not put the tensioner spring. I did not put that tensioner spring back on. There was a little bow in the cable here and it's pretty tight. It's kind of sticky. It's not moving very smooth. Um, so that kind of concerns me a little. But everything looks like it should be good. Hopefully it works and uh, prints just as good as before. I found after printing a little bit with the uh, new hot end and adapter that it became a little bit wobbly in the mount. So I added some of this uh, Teflon tape. It's actually PTFE tape, which is the same as the plastic tubing. Um, it's usually used for plumbing and you wrap pipes with it to keep it watertight. Um, I wrapped a couple revolutions around um, where it mounts here um, on, on the inside and I kind of overlapped it so that it, it made it much more rigid when I tightened this down. Um, it, it got rid of the wobble and now I can't twist it. Before I could twist it and it was wobbly. Um, so this made it much more rigid. I did shorten up the uh, PTFE tube um, to get it all very smoothly flowing. That's the key. You want that when you feed that filament in, you want that filament to feed in very smoothly and not get snagged up. I had to open up the tube a little. Um, but it is back together and so far it's been printing quite well. Um, I printed one test piece and now I'm printing a new um, flange that will direct air onto the part because as you can see right now there's no air coming down onto the part. So um, installing the new hot end um, was a little bit tricky, it wasn't super simple but just take your time and make sure everything makes sense. If you're thinking about mounting the new, a new uh, E3D or a clone, Chinese clone hot end on there, it's not the simplest thing to just slap together. You do have to modify it, drill some holes out, make some changes, and one advice I'd give you is wrap it or wrap the face of it with some aluminum tape uh, to protect it from that hot end.